we really do think about a hospital as a place to go to when we are sick, a place for us to go and hopefully the doctors give us the answers we need to get us uh, healthy and back on track again. But what about going to the hospital before you're sick so that you don't get sick? Talk a little bit more. Let's bring in Amanda Sweetman. She's the regional director of the Farming and Healthy Lifestyles over at the St. Joseph Mercy Health System. Amanda, great to have you with us. How are you? Great, how are you today? Great, I don't think about going to the hospital to go to the farm. Well, we're here to change that. Um, so St. Joseph Mercy Oakland has a brand new hospital-based farm up here in Pontiac, and we already have a hospital-based farm at our hospital in Ann Arbor. So I love changing the message. I know, and I love this program um, because I drive by that area quite often and noticed it. I was like, what is going on there? I didn't know it was connected with the hospital, but how did this come about? What is the conversation to say, hey, let's put a farm at the hospital? That is such a good question. So it started 11 years ago in at our Ann Arbor campus, which is one of the largest healthcare campuses in the country, it's 365 acres used to be several different family farms. And there was this feeling of, gosh, you know, we're really good at caring for people say break their arm or have a heart attack, but we're seeing some patients over and over again. And we're really getting this sense that there's other things going on. It's those daily small choices that we all make where, you know, maybe we know we should eat healthier, we should exercise more, but it's hard because there can be fear, there can be lack of knowledge. And so we started the farm as a way to join people on their path to better health make it a can and a want instead of a should. And really our mission these days is to grow a healthy community by empowering people through food, education, and relationships. So for so many people that didn't grow up on a farm, they must look at this like, huh, what do I do? You mean it doesn't come out of a store? I can actually grow a tomato? Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the best parts of my job, honestly, is the education piece. You know, I'm lucky today I'm in the hospital and I'm in my office so I don't have to have my mask on, but I was literally out on the farm this morning in Pontiac pruning tomatoes and, you know, staff was walking by and we had radishes ready. So we just pulled them out of the ground and handed them to people as they were headed home. And so we do education on how do I prune a tomato, right? A lot of people might not know how to do that or when are my radishes ready or any of those things. So it's just, it can be so simple and so, good for you just because you're eating more healthy food, but also because you're gardening, which we all, we've seen the research that it's it's good for us. It helps us self-soothe, it helps us connect to the earth and to ourselves. So it's really, it's really fun. On top of that as well, I think one thing uh, coming out of the pandemic, we have learned because of COVID-19, food is medicine. It nourishes our bodies and it's so important what we're putting into our bodies. And do you think the pandemic has kind of helped increase that awareness and that interest in people wanting to get back and maybe if not growing their own food, at least being more aware of what they're putting into their bodies? I think that's definitely true. Um, I remember last spring when things felt very different from now, right? When shelves were feeling empty and there were some questions just about where does our food come from? And it caused us all to look at the food system. And so I think there's two things going on. One, I think people are very much in, involved in their health right now. We're thinking about it a lot. Um, and so thinking about what you eat and how you eat is very important. And I think too, I noticed a big uptake in interest in local farms and local agriculture because we wanna make sure that we have a just and robust food system for our communities to rely on. Amanda Sweetman with us here on The Mega Cash. She's the Regional Director of Farming and Healthy Lifestyles over at St. Joseph Mercy Health System. And with this new farm over in Pontiac, how does it work? Who really reaps the benefits of all that great food? So we've got a lot of different programs that we're launching. Um, the food, which is the big piece of it, um, that will go out to our patients, it will go out to our providers. We are starting what we're calling a produce to patients program where those radishes that we're harvesting this morning, we'll take them in and we'll take them to our clinics. Um, so our women's and children's clinic, our dental clinic, our low cost care clinics. Um, and we'll make sure that those are out as a way for providers to engage with their patients to say, you know what, food really is medicine. 
maybe you just got diagnosed with diabetes and we're gonna help you manage that um, through medication, but also lifestyle. So it's a great tool. It's a great way to get food to your community. Um, we also think here at St. Joe's about how to be good community partners. Our mission is to be a transforming healing presence in our community and come alongside people. And one of the things we know about this area of Pontiac is that it's what we would call a food desert or I actually love the term food swamp. There's a McDonald's on the corner, but there's no grocery store nearby where you can get healthy food. So we're increasing fresh food access to our community as well. So we're starting our participations program. We're also select card ugh, excuse me, starting something called our Farm Share. And this is a collaborative program where we're actually working with three different farms um, and our food. And we'll bring that all together, pack it up into a box, and then it's like a veggie subscription service for local food. You can sign up for a membership and get uh, a weekly box, so every week, July through November, or you can get a buy half share and you get it every other week um, and you pick it up from the farm on Thursdays. Uh, we also, about a quarter of our memberships are going out to food insecure patients um, who are in our community. So you can actually get this for free. So there's a way to sign up on our website. You go to stjoesfarm.org and look for, in the programs area, the St. Joe's Oakland Farm Share and you can sign up um, and if you can afford it, you can pay for it. And if you can't and you have some financial need, you can apply to be a part of our Farm Share Assistance Program. There's Amanda, this is an amazing program and it is so needed because, you know, for years, everyone has focused on how Detroit didn't have grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we should remind people, um, you know, there are so many liquor stores on the corners, but that's where people were buying their food. It, because there's not a grocery store nearby and if you can't if you don't have a car you know you have to ride a bike you have to walk where are you going you're going to the local corner store which is usually a liquor store with a lot of times expired food so to have something like this in our backyard is i think really going to help change the conversation and change be a game changer for so many families because they can have that conversation with their kids to say hey, this is fresh and here's how we use it. You're exactly right. And you know, we're also adding programming. Um, you can come and volunteer at the farm. So if you wanna get some hands-on experience, learn how to prune tomatoes or grow a perennial flower garden or just come out and be outside, come please volunteer with us. Um, we'll also have community programs. You know, we're feeling it out with COVID right now, but you know, next year we'll we'll put both feet in and get really into our education and hope to offer classes and, and places where people can, it's that teach a person to fish idea, right? So if I can teach you how to garden or if I can teach you how to eat some new types of fruits and vegetables that are enjoyable and less expensive and accessible, then we've set you up for tools for life. And that's where I think the leadership at St. Joe's has done such a wonderful job investing in these programs that they truly believe that food is medicine and that this is how we transform our communities. Shannon Strybeck, our president, always says to me that the farm is the living embodiment of the love and connection we feel with our community and that this is something that we want to bring forth and make available to people. This is so great, um, and, and it's so nice to have right here in our neighborhood as well. And uh, Amanda, how does it work like who runs the farm because you know like right now you know it's the muggy machine is on and if you're not watering things a couple times a day it's going to be uh dead before you know it you got it so we're so fortunate to have hired a farm manager for the st joe's oakland farm caitlin smoger um she's actually out harvesting right now um so she's uh, she and i work on it together but we rely a lot on volunteers we're also hiring an intern um, to help her out this summer. And it's an all hands on deck kind of thing right now. But you know, that's the fun thing as well. How do you figure out what you're going to plant when? So we have a crop plan. Um, and that's something that I've been fortunate to learn through some experience and Caitlin's worked in other farms as well. And so we go through and we think about what we have space wise, what we want to have as a, a product at the end of it. And um, because we have such a small space, so it's, you know, the farm is actually right next to the hospital. It, you walk through it to get to the medical office building. So it's a small space, so we're being really efficient about it. So we're interplanting. So my tomatoes, which will be very tall, have radishes on the side. Um, my kale, which will grow all season, I'm growing, growing carrots underneath. 
Um, and so thinking about what plants grow well together, what likes cool weather, so kale and radishes like to be cool, tomatoes and peppers and eggplants like to be hot. And so we're, you know, we're timing it for the seasons. And with that, um, it- how do you anticipate so this is the first year is just kind of getting off the ground but i know uh, wasn't there another farm in the ann arbor area as well yeah um so i expect there to be a lot of growth um so the farm in ann arbor is 11 years old we have hoop houses which are like unheated greenhouses where we grow in this in the um soil so we'll install one of those at st joe's Pontiac. um so that we can grow year round. So we'll be able to have salad greens and spinach in the winter. We'll be able to have a lot more summer crops in the the summer when we install that. We're going to build an outdoor pavilion. So we'll have a safe appealing outdoor space that say you're, you know, waiting for an appointment. How about having an outdoor waiting room? Or, you know, maybe you're a nurse who's just had a really hard shift, right? Healthcare is hard in any time and it's particularly hard right now. Come outside have a chance to take a deep breath and, you know, recenter yourself. Other things we're planning on installing at the farm, we're gonna have a cut flower garden where, you know, we'll have like cutting hours, like office hours, where you can come and cut a bouquet to take to a colleague or maybe to an ailing parent. Um, so we're trying to bring those moments of joy um, to our hospital and to our neighbors and our community. This is really taking healthcare and thinking outside of the box and integrating the entire person, not just one side of the science and the medicine. That's exactly right. And I think one of the things that I think is very fortunate is that the doctor's entrance actually runs through the farm. So every day when they come and when they leave, they are seeing the farm, learning from us, and thinking it helps us make those connections that are really already happening in St. Joe's, but we're providing tools and extra education. Because part of the reason I'm invested in this health system is that we really truly believe from the bottom to the top that it's the whole person that matters. Um, and how do we invest in you as a whole person? Some of that is the health care you receive, some of that is the food you eat, some of that is the community connections we make. Because some of the, I've been so, impressed by the city of Pontiac and the number of urban farms and gardens, the number of organizations who are working to bring hope and joy and a positive future to the community. It really is starting and teaching the kids when they're young. Uh, You know, my dad, they grew up on farms and, you know, they've been farming all of their lives. But then, of course, once we all came along, you know, we didn't farm, but we would go to my grandfather's house and they always had, you know, pigs and horses and you learn about like your eggs there's nothing more satisfying than going out and getting an egg you know from the chicken it is the coolest experience when you're a kid it's so cool yeah i think you know we have a very robust youth education program at our in our board farm it's a larger space um i think we will look to have some kind of youth education we'll certainly look to have education it's all about experiential, right? How do you get their hands in the dirt? How do you make curiosity cool again, right? Because I see kindergartners and everything is awesome, you know, can't keep their hands out of the dirt. They'll try that vegetable if you get excited about it too. But you know, fifth grade is like, oh no, I'm too cool for this. You know, like, I don't I don't wanna be here. Like, it smells weird, like, no, thank you. And to me, that's a learned behavior. So let's provide alternate um, role models and stories. And this is true for adults too, you know, I think, it's never too late to make a change. Um, and the good thing about this is that it's delicious. It doesn't have to be a should, it should be a want. And it really is, uh, along with that, teaching people to cook what is in season. Um, I will say, I was at the grocery store the other day, I forget what it was, and I was like, what are these things? I'd never seen them before. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like a type of berry that's out, like in Miami and Florida. Because my friend down there is like, oh, we have them on trees everywhere. They're expensive up there. (laughs) You know, when they're in your backyard, you grow up with them. But explore the new foods and don't be afraid to taste new things and do it when you're young. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And I wish everybody had the childhood you had, like the experience of having a fresh egg and being outside and, you know, getting to experience that agricultural heritage that so many of us have. Um, But, you know, there's lots of ways that we can try to bring that to the city environment, too. 
Well, um, Amanda, I will say we also made mud pies. <laughs> <laughs> All the time, you were kids. Of course, we had mud pies, and then you'd have mud pie fights. So, you know, <laughs> good. perfect. Good for your microbiome. <laughs> There's always a learning lesson in there, right? Exactly. Amanda Sweetman with us here on the Mega Cash. She's the regional director of farming and healthy lifestyles over at St. Joseph Mercy Health Systems. And uh, again, we're talking about the new farm that they just are planning and getting going over there on the Pontiac campus. And with that, Amanda. And uh, how can people find out more about the program? Yeah, so there's a couple different ways. You can go to our website, stjoesfarm.org. Um, there's information about the Oakland Farm on there as well as Ann Arbor. Um, you can email us at oaklandfarmshare at stjoeshealth.org. Or you can call us at 734-712-4767. Um, there's lots of different ways to get involved in volunteering. Um, you can go to the St. Joe's Hospital website for that or send us a note. Check us out on social media. We often put up fun videos. I just recorded Caitlin on a lesson on how to prune tomatoes. So there's lots of fun stuff that's up on Facebook, um, St. Joe's Farm, and Instagram, the farm in St. Joe's. See, I'm. this is so great to have you on. I think I'm actually going to go try to volunteer with you guys because I know nothing. I told my husband I wanted um, a raised garden this year. I have to figure out how to keep the uh, deer away first. My soap on the rope is not working this year like oh, it did no. last year. <laughs> She's like, no, it's not going to. <laughs> Fencing. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> but it, fencing doesn't look pretty. <laughs> a dog? No. Like, oh, well, we have a big oh, dog. Well. She just looks at them, though. She thinks they're like another dog to play with. She's like, oh, hi, I'm Trixie. Anyway, well, I mean, it's been great having you. We appreciate your time, and uh, maybe I'll see you over at the farm one day. Thank you. We'd love to have you. Thanks for having us.